Hello, my name is Burkhard Ulrich and I welcome you to my talk on the modulation scheme for a CVS clamp switch operated three level flying capacitor buck converter. First, I would like to introduce myself. I'm working as a professor at the Baden Württemberg Cooperative State University Stuttgart at the engineering department. I'm a former power electronics design engineer at Siemens AG working on switch mode power supplies for industrial applications and I gained a Dr. Inc. degree in power electronics from the electrical engineering department of Dresden Technical University. Now to the technical background of my presentation. This is to provide a modulation scheme which allows high power density DC-DC converters by combining a clamp switch approach to achieve zero voltage switching with a multi-level flying capacitor converter architecture. Basically, this builds up on a presentation made last year at PCIM, where it was shown that it's possible to employ a clamp switch approach to achieve zero voltage switching also for multi-level flying capacitor converters. In that case, a clamp switch shown here on the right was placed across the inductor, letting the inductor current free wheel at a negative value to discharge the device capacitances here connected at the switch node. One problem with this approach is that if we have a very small inductance value that the zero voltage switching is largely restricted by the load and by the input to output voltage ratio. Therefore, it can happen that the CVS is lost, especially if the inductor will fully demagnetize during the freewheeling phase. As shown here, although there is at the beginning of the freewheeling phase a negative current flowing through the clamp switch network, the voltage drop causes the inductor current to demagnetize and therefore um, no energy will be stored in the inductor to achieve a CVS. Therefore, it is here proposed to modify the circuit structure and to employ a more complex control scheme to extend the zero voltage switching over a wider load range and a wider input to output voltage range. The circuit considered in this presentation is shown here on this slide is basically a three level flying capacitor buck converter with four active switches as shown here. The converter uses two active transistors TBL and TAL as synchronous rectifiers to control the value of the freewheeling current and we have here a clamp switch comprised of the anti-series connection of two active switches TCL1 and TCL2 allowing a lower voltage drop across the inductor during the freewheeling days and therefore allows easier to achieve CVS. Basically the converter is designed to operate in discontinuous connection mode as all these clamp switch converters do and at the turn off of the clamp switch the negative inductor current will start to resonant charge the midpoint voltage from the value of the output voltage to half the input voltage um, allowing a zero voltage turn on of the two high side transistors. For the here proposed operating scheme to work we need a current sensor to synchronize the gate driving signals the basic operation will be explained using the simulated waveforms shown here on this slide. The two upper traces show the voltage at the midpoint and the voltage across one of the low side switches. In the middle the red trace shows the inductor current and the lower six traces show the control signals of the six active switches. The converter is operated in a sense that the two high side switches are PWM controlled with the same duty cycle D but delayed by half a period. The inductor current will therefore show the typical discontinuous current wave shape increasing linear during the phase where one of the two high side transistors is on then decreasing to zero but here the synchronous rectifier switches are not turned off at the zero crossing but they are turned off if the inductor current hits some predefined negative value E min 1 and then the clamp switch will be activating letting a negative current to free wheel during this phase T5 till T6 and at this time instant where the clamp switch control signals go to low and the clamp switch turns off there is sufficient current flowing through the inductor, the midpoint voltage will rise from a value of V out to half V in at this time instance T6 or 
T13, allowing both high side transistors to turn on with CDS. To achieve a converter operation according to the proposed operating scheme, several constraints have to be obeyed. The first is um, the CDS operation requires discontinuous connection mode. This puts a limit on the maximum inductance value, which is dependent on the output power, the output voltage, and the ratio of output to input voltage and the switching frequency. Also, there is a limit on the minimum freewheeling current, which need to flow just prior to turn off of the clamp switch through the clamp switch network to allow fully discharging the high side transistor strain to source capacitance and also an optimum dead time should be chosen to allow the high side transistors to turn on when the minimum voltage will be reached. To verify the proposed operating scheme, a low power prototype converter has been built, which is shown here. Basically, the input voltage was taken with a nominal value of 48 volt ranging from 24 to 60 volt and the output voltage is in the range of 3.3 to 5 volt and maximum output current was 5 amp. The converter is operated at a constant switching frequency of slightly less than 100 kilohertz and although we have uh, such a low uh, switching frequency um, the required inductance value is very low with um, just one microhenry. The implemented control scheme for the converter prototype is shown here on this slide. It consists basically uh, out of three parts as uh, shown here. The, the upper part is a voltage mode control circuit with two PWM modulators which are synchronized and phase shifted which directly generates the control signals for the two high side switches. The middle part is the control circuit for generating of the synchronous rectifier control signal. These signals are derived from the complementary outputs of the two PWM modulators and these are prematurely terminated using this minimum current detection circuit which resets the control signals if the inductor current reaches a predetermined minimum reference value and the lowest block here shows the control signal generation of the two clamp switches. Now some experimental results here shown are um, basic measured waveforms comparable to the simulated waveforms. On the left side we can see the inductor current, midpoint voltage and the six control signals um, and these show a very good match compared to the simulated waveforms and on the right side in more detail we can see here clearly the CDS turn on of the two high side transistors as the midpoint voltage will here rise in a resonant manner um, after turn off of the clamp switches and therefore allowing the two high side transistors to turn on with zero drain to source voltage. Finally, experimental results showing the measured efficiency of the converter are presented. This is done for an operating point with an input voltage of 60 volt and an output voltage of 5 volt. Here the converter operation of the proposed zero voltage switching operation is compared to a hard switched operated converter. Therefore the red traces indicate the proposed operating method and the blue traces are for a hard switch converter and as can be seen here the efficiency increases therefore the losses decreases. The solid lines show the power stage efficiency and these dashed lines um, show the total converter efficiency including the gate drive power and also the power for the control circuit. As we can see the efficiency of the converter is increased because turn on losses of the two high side transistors are reduced by employing a CDS and um, this effect will be more pronounced at higher input voltage as then um, also the turn on losses would be higher. This leads to the conclusion of my talk. As can be seen, a modulation scheme is proposed for a clamp switch CDS operation of a flying capacitor buck converter. And this allows to extend the CDS range for a wide input voltage range and a wide load range. Therefore, nearly the entire load range of CDS is possible, um, which is done by controlling the freewheeling current using the synchronous rectifier switches and employing a low drop clamp switch. Therefore, the 
problem of uh, demagnetizing during the freewheeling interval is solved and the operating scheme can be used even for converters if we have a small inductance value and as also shown in the experimental results the losses of the converter are reduced if you have any questions regarding my talk there will be a q a session uh, following this presentation